like when I was like her. Right before you got hooked up with Pat Joe, is it true that you were just about to hang up the microphone? Yeah, man. I was um uh I was just considering not being into it because I was investing more than I was I was in the red. You know what I'm saying? I was investing more than I was returning on my investment. Yeah. Yeah. And um a lot of time I spent as an artist, I never really spent a lot of time as a businessman. Mm. It was always a hustler. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of us say we hustlers, but it's a difference to be a businessman. You know, a businessman wakes up earlier than a hustler, hmm. you know, and he has a lot more to tend to than a hustler. A hustler's only going when they phone ring. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. A businessman is operating on all cylinders. And um, I didn't differentiate the difference. So um, a lot of my time was just spent, you know, um, trying to make the best music and not really make return on the music mm. and at this point in time i was just having a child it was like 2014 and um you know I, a lot of my homies i also was getting fomo you know a lot of my homies were buying cars and balling out and going out and um jewelry and new jordans and nice clothes and i was just Paying bills and going to the studio. Paying bills, going to the studio. Yeah. Or probably have enough money this month to buy some sneakers and then go to the studio. And most of the dudes that had all that stuff that you was talking about, most of them don't have those things anymore. No, sir. They go Absolutely away. They, not. Those things go away quick. That's a fact. So, um, you know, I got lost in that, my friend. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, and I ended up, if it wasn't for, uh, shout out to Puff, man. If it wasn't for Puff having a conversation with me. Then and I you got ahead of me. I was about to ask you, Diddy called you. That, this is a headline right now. Diddy rings your, your phone rings. You pick it up. It's Diddy. Am I right? Right. Talk to me about this. Um, it's actually, um, I was on my way to, I was, I was living in Queens, Flushing. I was in, um, I had a Honda Accord. And my, it was me, my wife now, and um, my daughter in the backseat, we were going to Jamaica Avenue to buy chicken pat beef patties, bro. And um, at the Coliseum, Colise at the Collie Block. And um, I had been in touch with someone who said they worked at Bad Boy. Um, like a week before that, had got my tape. And he was like, yo, I work for Puff. So I was like, oh, that's what's up. You know, I really didn't right. buy too much into it. And um, he was like, yo, you really dope, man. You know, he was just overselling it he was like yo i work but he didn't have an avi it was the bad boy logo mm. so like really his page lying. yeah i'm like it's his page said his name he he had like you know locked this stuff and but his picture was just a it was a cassette tape with the bad boy logo on it like a 94 cassette of biggie or something mm -hmm. bad boy logo so i'm like um you know whatever and um i spoke to him i took his call he was like yo um you got a situation? And I'm like, nah, just... Who we talking about? Just, like, this is Diddy now. Nah, this is the dude. Like, when okay. he first hit me up, you know, when he speaks to me, he's like, yo, you got a situation? He told me that Puff had heard the music already. In the in the first conversation, he was That's like, crazy. yo, I was listening to your mixtape, your project, and Puff walked into the studio. Like, and, um, like, he asked, who's that? Like, yeah, who's that? He made me bring the record back, and he asked me, who's that? He still, he listened to the record. So he was like, yo, I don't really, I'm not supposed to be telling you that. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to let you know so you know I'm official. So I was like, all right, but I still ain't really like. Right. And um, so he never called my phone, never texted me. We just spoke on Instagram. So I put my number in the Instagram like, yo, here's, you know, whatever. My phone rings the next week. Um, I was going through my uncle had just passed away maybe like two weeks prior. So I was depressed. I was not wanting to do nothing. And um, my phone ring, man, it's a number I don't recognize. And um, the dude, he's like, yo, what's up? I'm like, yo, what's good? He's like, yo, Fee, what's up? I'm like, yo, what's good? He's like, you free? He's like, this ride, you good? You free? I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, the big homie want to speak to you. So I'm like, but before I get to speak to him, like Puff already took the phone. Like they must have, like how yeah. I imagine it in my head, they sitting together, like in the car or wherever they are. And Puff was like, yo, call him. Because before he even said anything, Puff was on the phone, like, yo, Playboy. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like Puff, he really said Playboy. Oh, like he was like, yo, Playboy, what's up? I was you recognize like, the voice. 
Yeah, man. Like one of the moments in your head, like uh, God, God, God slows down time for you significantly for you to have a moment to know that you're about to be on the phone with somebody or be in this moment with somebody and then it's presented and you actually hear them. That feeling to blow your mind like, oh. He said the feeling that blow your mind. We're going to hold that comment for right there. Let me say this. People often talk about, he's right for jokes. People make all kinds of jokes about Puff. Fine, it's fair game. He knows this. He's a good sport. His impact on music and hip-hop cannot be underestimated. Like, come on. Okay, the guy was going from Howard University, coming up to intern at Uptown, doing his thing. He, he had the vision. He was the guy that put the whole Mary J. Blige look together, the Jodeci look together. He brought uh, Biggie to the table doing street rhymes over R&B beats. Something that was not, that didn't exist. And people got comfortable with it in the mid nineties and all the shiny suit shit. But before he did that, nobody had unlocked that. And that meant so much for uh, hip hop's growth expansion. You know what I mean? So you got to give props to Puff. Um, and so for people that sitting there thinking, why are they tripping? Because it's, but because motherfuckers that know, no, I want you to go ahead and continue though. Nah, you couldn't have said it better, Mike. Well worded. I mean, for the for the uh for the person watching this like you said who's wondering why it's such a big deal to us well for me personally um first and foremost man i'm from jefferson projects you know what i'm saying i'm just a spanish kid grandmother raised me my mom smoked crack sold crack my pops was a musician he was on the road when that gave up he started selling drugs got caught up in some big time shit um i ain't have nothing growing up you know what I'm saying? I never had it. Wasn't no layups for me. Everything was a double team, break through the defense, get the bucket, and one. You know what I'm saying? It was earned. It was deserved. So um, I also seen what Puck did for Black Rob firsthand. I also seen what he did for G Death firsthand, changed their lives, took them out the projects. Not only did he did do that for them, but for me, being there at the time, in the projects, like you got behind you, Mike, living on the seventh floor, it changed my whole hood. What the fuck was poppin' is your boy, Mike, when I was like, uh, 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 uh